But I do want to thank many of our special guests today. Bishop Warfel, Dr. Hockman, Lieutenant Governor Cooney, Sisters of Providence, members of the Board of Trustees, fellow presidents, chancellors, delegates, invited guests, students, faculty, staff, dear friends, and especially the alumni who walk with us today. Very honored. Thank you very much. We come here to celebrate new beginnings for the University of Great Falls. But first, I want to begin by thanking my wife, Terry. We've been married almost 33 years, and we've been there for each other every step of the way along this amazing journey that God has called us on. Life has thrown us challenges, including three boys in four years. <laughs> but our faith has been a rock in our support. I hope we still have far to go, and I know that God will be with us. I also want to thank my sons for coming together today. It is nice to have our entire family together again, even though it may be for a short time. The city of Great Falls is the most recent destination on my family's journeys around the country. I also want to thank our Great Falls, new Great Falls friends and neighbors for the warm welcome you've provided. As I've been telling everybody who's asked, how do you like Montana? We love Montana. Thank you. I also want to thank my friend Mark for your kind remarks, and along with his wife Veronica for making the trek from Valparaiso, Indiana. He didn't mention but I'm also a Hoosier, so there's, a, there's another tie. But I also want to thank Veronica. She may not realize it, but she's been a great support for my wife as we've met the challenges of being a college and university president. Terry and I both appreciate both your and Mark's dear friendship. It shows, Mark, that in spite of the Reformation, Lutherans and Catholics can work together. <laughs> Finally, I want to express a special appreciation to all those who work so hard in the making the university shine today. There are too many names to mention, but please know that I am grateful for all the hard work and loving care that went in every detail to making today such a wonderful experience. We have shown, we truly have shown UGF at its best. Thank you. Over 150 years ago, Mother Emily Gamlin founded the Sisters of Providence, a Catholic congregation of religious women in Montreal, Canada. The Sisters of Providence is the sponsoring congregation of the University of Great Falls. In reading about the noble histories of these great sisters, I was inspired by the leadership they have shown in meeting the needs of the orphan, the sick, the poor, and the students in their schools, and the sick in their hospitals. If you look closely, what emerges is a story of courageous leadership that always puts the needs of others before their own. If you can imagine a moment what Montana was like in 1892. That was when the First Sisters of Providence came to Great Falls to open Columbus Hospital, now part of Benefice Healthcare. I imagine the Wild West Frontier was a pretty scary experience for these religious women. I know, because I would probably be pretty scared. However, through their courage and leadership, they created new beginnings for the city of Great Falls to ensure their health care needs were being met. Columbus Hospital was the first hospital for a city that was only seven years old, but had a growing population of 10,000 people. This is a common story of Catholic women religious. They often brought the first hospitals, the first orphanages, and the first schools to many places that had none. They attended colleges to earn the degrees they needed to become the leaders of these hospitals and colleges. And in 1932, two congregations of Catholic women religious the Ursuline Sisters and the Sisters of Providence created new beginnings again by founding what is now the University of Great Falls. Today, the University of Great Falls is a proud recipient of this heritage. Since its founding, the university has faced several challenges that came its way, often by drawing on the same entrepreneurial spirit that the early sisters in creating new beginnings, being one of the first to create new programs to meet the needs of the time. For example, in 1932, UGF was opened to 
educate teachers who are sorely needed in the frontiers of Montana. During the war in 1940, UGS started a Civil Aeronautics Ground School to help train pilots for the National Defense Program. And in 1958, to fill the need for higher education in rural Montana, UGS started one of the very first distance education programs in the country by offering live TV broadcasts of course lectures on KRTV at 6 a.m. on Saturday mornings. And I've even been told by some Great Falls residents that they even remember waking early on Saturday morning and watching these lectures in preparation for the start of Saturday morning cartoons. However, no one added that the lectures were as fun as the cartoons. These live TV broadcasts were eventually followed by mailing videotapes and CDs and was mentioned earlier by using telecom technology to advance test education in Montana. In 1978, UGF began our paralegal distance education program to fill the need for paralegals in rural Montana. In, 19, in 2006, this program was expanded to include online delivery to U.S. Army personnel to fill a need for trained paralegal specialists around the globe. More recently, in 2008, to fill the need for bachelor's prepared nurses, UGF began our first Providence Health Online program that now enrolls over 350 nurses in an RN to BSN degree completion program. Right? It's common today in higher ed to talk about flipping the classroom, videotaping lectures, putting them online, and using the classroom for more engaging activities. But by these examples, you can see UGF was flipping the classroom back in 1958. We are a leader, and as near as we can tell in our research, we are the third university in the country to offer a distance education program. But what all these UGF stories of new beginnings illustrate is that whenever there was a need or a challenge, the University of Great Falls responded. To this fact, I'm truly appreciative of the legacies of previous UGF presidents. I am assuming the presidency of an institution that is ready and prepared to courageously take new bold steps needed to create more new beginnings in a new chapter of the University of Great Falls story. I especially want to thank Sister of Providence, Sister Lucille Dean, who served as interim president last year and laid the foundation for a successful transition. Thank you, Sister Lucille. She had never worked in higher education, and becoming a university president was an eye-opening experience. But she did yeoman's work in preparing UGF. It was wonderful to follow her. Before I outline the plot of this new chapter for UGF, I need to mention a bit of the context. As far as I can tell, or anybody I've talked to, UGF is the only true liberal arts university in the United States that is owned by a healthcare system and not just any healthcare system. UGF, as you've heard, is part of Providence St. Joseph Health, which under the leadership of Dr. Rod Hockman has become the third largest nonprofit healthcare system in the country, with 50 hospitals, 106,000 employees, which include 23,000 physicians, 40,000 nurses, and 1.9 million cared lives. In order to provide the quality care that these 1.9 million people need and expect in the future, Providence St. Joseph Health, as in any large organization, needs to invest in the talent needed to provide this quality care. In nursing alone, Providence Health projects a need for 10,000 new nurses in the next 10 years. If you consider all the other professionals required by a healthcare system to deliver quality care, you have a huge need trained professionals. This is how UGF, as part of Providence St. Joseph Health System, can help. So here's the main plot of the new chapter, or as if you've ever done a strategic plan, here's our vision. The University of Great Falls will become the innovative liberal arts university of Providence St. Joseph Health by providing transformational educational programs that will develop leadership talent for the common good and 21st century healthcare. 
Let me describe how we're going to do this. During this academic year, UGF will be creating a School of Health Sciences to deliver certificate and degree programs for Providence St. Joseph Health employees. Our current Providence programs, including the RN to BSN degree completion program, healthcare administration, bioinformatics, and infection control and epidemiology will become part of the School of Health Sciences. We will be working with Providence St. Joseph Health Talent Acquisition Office to determine the need for new additional programs to fill projected talent gaps. What we already know is that the largest need is for new and advanced degree nurses. So our initial focus will be on creating new bachelor's, master's, and doctorate nursing programs. Simultaneously, we will fill other talent gaps by creating additional healthcare-related bachelor's and graduate programs. Most of these new programs will be online programs. I am not shy in making the bold claim that I fully expect this new school to be enrolling around 10,000 students in 10 years. However, our partnership with Providence St. Joseph Health doesn't stop there. We will also be growing the enrollment on our Great Falls campus by increasing the number of students who are Providence St. Joseph Health employee dependents. We will be leveraging our Providence employee tuition discount program to bring additional students from all seven western states where Providence operates. To make UGF even more attractive to Providence families and other potential students, we will be developing a summer internship program with locations throughout the Providence health system to develop an additional pipeline for new healthcare talent. Another approach we will use to grow enrollment on the Great Falls campus is by expanding our athletic program. We recently elevated our Director of Athletics position to a Vice President level to indicate the critical nature of athletics to our UGF mission. More than 50% of our current students are intercollegiate athletes, and I fully expect this trend to continue as we add new athletic programs. As I've told UGF alum Dave Gant, our new VP for Athletics, be bold and go big. Even though I know other Montana institutions have supporters in Great Falls, I would like to see nothing more than for Great Falls to truly become Argo country. And yes, to answer the immediate question that comes up in any conversation about our growth in athletics, as Dave is often quick to state, everything's on the table. And yes, we will consider adding football, but only if it makes sense. Football is expensive, and we will need sufficient support to make it happen. So, if anybody here is interested in funding and naming a new football stadium, please let Dave or I know, and we can accelerate our plans. That'd be 100 new men on campus alone. Another new beginning is that we are going to put our career center in the forefront of the UGF student experience. The top concern I hear from parents is whether there will be a return on their investment in their child's education when they graduate. To help, we will be creating a four-year co-curricular career readiness program that our students can participate in in order to help them land that first job. If they successfully complete this program and they aren't successful in finding a job within six months of graduation, we're going to provide additional help to get that first job. One key requirement of this career readiness program will be to participate in some kind of an internship or real world educational experience. Not only will this help them in their job search, but it will also help defray their cost of their tuition. I'm also excited about the potential for our career readiness program to enhance our engagement with the Great Falls business community. By partnering with Great Falls, UGF offers the opportunity to help diversify the economy and, to, and to attract and retain young professional talent. By working together, we can help build and attract businesses to the area that require bachelor's prepared talent for a city that is just starting to realize its full economic development potential. One final topic I'd like to mention in our new beginnings is that our faculty, are also seeking to reinvigorate what a UGF education represents by redesigning our undergraduate core curriculum. 
This is no easy task for the faculty, but they have made great progress in the first two months of this academic year. As a Catholic institution, we have a moral duty to provide the quality education grounded in the Catholic intellectual tradition. The interesting question that follows from this effort is just what is a Catholic education? It may surprise you, but this is not an easy question to answer, and it is often the most debated topic on any Catholic campus. But here are some thoughts from me. First and foremost, a Catholic education welcomes students from all faiths. A Catholic education is ecumenical in that we welcome and engage all tradition in a dialogue that seeks the truth. A Catholic education is about educating the whole person, the mind, the heart, and the soul by emphasizing the intellectual, moral, and spiritual formation of our students. A Catholic education is also a dialogue between reason and faith, hence the typical requirement to take courses in both philosophy and theology on a Catholic campus. A Catholic education is also about what is discovering, about discovering what is really true, what is really good, and experiencing God's presence in the beautiful. But most importantly, I think the main purpose of a Catholic education in today's world is to keep the sacred in human nature. What it means to be human is a fundamental question for an age where the advancement of science, especially bioscience, could afford us the ability to fulfill Descartes' dream of possessing the knowledge to control and manipulate human nature and thus end or at least moderate our human frailties. Science in offering the great potential to cure many of our ills, also offers us the ability, in a way, to become like God, with the ability to create and redefine human nature to satisfy our own desires. As with any scientific advancement, there is potential for good, but also the potential to use the same knowledge for harm. How are we to decide what is good and what is harmful? Science, by its nature, does not contain an ethical system that can inform these decisions. As I have heard Bishop Warfel state a couple of times since arriving in Great Falls, just because we can does not mean that we should. Science only knows how to generate knowledge, not how this new knowledge should or should not be used. So we need to have a conversation about what it means to be human. Otherwise, scientific progress and market forces left to their own methods could create a world similar to the dehumanized, brave new world so well described by Aldous Huxley. Pope Benedict XVI, during his visit to the United States in an address to the presidents of Catholic colleges and universities, and he was a professor, by the way, at one point, thought that this issue was so important that he spoke to the necessity of a Catholic education where wisdom discerns truth through a dialogue of faith and reason that drawing upon divine wisdom, the church sheds light on the foundation of human morality and ethics, upholding the essential moral categories of right and wrong, without which hope could only wither, giving away to cold, pragmatic calculations of utility which render the person little more than a pawn on some ideological chessboard. It is precisely the ethical and moral foundations of an integral Christian humanism grounded in the wisdom of the Catholic intellectual tradition that provides the philosophical and theological framework our society needs to protect human dignity. Faith, theology, philosophy, and the liberal arts and sciences can collaborate to help us pursue our true human good. These are all part of the Catholic intellectual tradition that provides first principles to educate well-formed conscience to determine right action. This is the real moral purpose and hallmark of a Catholic education. Our UGF faculty are working hard to ensure 
we offer an excellent, excellent educational experience grounded in this tradition. Catholic social teachings and the spiritual charisms of the Sisters of Providence to aid in the intellectual, spiritual, ethical, and leadership development of our students. The UGF experience will provide the theory, context, and practical knowledge necessary for graduates not only to have successful careers, but more importantly to possess the moral courage to live lives of integrity, to promote justice, and to speak the truth. We will provide our students with the experience they need to become keenly aware of their moral responsibilities and duties to serve the common good. UGF is and will remain a profoundly human institution. I have told many people since arriving at UGF that this is a special place. It is special because it is a caring community. I have visited dozens of college campuses during my academic travels, but I have never experienced such an intense, genuine, and gracious spirit that lives so strongly on this campus. Every person at UGF takes pride in their work, in doing their best, helping others, especially our students. So the University of Great Falls, by providing an excellent Catholic education, will educate and develop intellectual leaders that when given the opportunity will rise to the occasion and have the moral courage to do the right thing for the right reasons. And most important, to serve the common good, not their own self-interest. I would like everyone in this room today to join UGF in our new beginnings to achieve this noble vision. Thank you, and God bless.